without further ado, let's get into it. So the clip I'm going to be doing for you guys is actually a clip I got while off-roading the other day. Um, so we're going to go ahead and play it straight through how it is as I recorded it. And now obviously it's important that you set up your shots as cinematic as possible for the best results afterwards. As you can see, I kind of got the sun backdrop, casting some cool uh, light rays. Um, sort of smooth camera operating could be better, but all that stuff is very important. You want to be conscious of that while you're filming. But basically, we're going to be showing you today how to turn that clip into this. Now, this isn't anything crazy difficult. It's kind of just some superficial um, level sort of stuff that can help just bring your video to that next level. So this is what I was able to turn that into. definitely an improvement over this um, so we're gonna go ahead and just kick this out of the way and drag down the original go ahead and let that render in really quick okay now the first thing you want to decide really um, is what you're gonna edit the clip to as far as music um, this also this really depends on kind of the vibe that you're trying to accomplish Okay, so your first step that you want to do is decide what song you're going to edit your clip to. Um, now, maybe you don't want to use uh, any music or sound to it, but it certainly brings your um, video to the next level. So for me, I decided to use Indian Summer. It's kind of a adventure sort of tune. It fits really well with um, the kind of video I'm trying to make. So we're going to line this up and you want to make sure you line it up in sync with the music. So if I played it like this. Not very natural or smooth. So what we want to do is line it up with that kind of initial drop. How I like to do this is kind of close my eyes and listen to the music and just hit pause as soon as I think um, in my mind the video should drop. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just hit play. Boom. That's right where I think it should drop in. So we're gonna go ahead and slide the clip up to it, and see if that works. Out. Rough, and if you want to make it fine tune, you can always zoom in on the actual audio clip and see where it spikes at um, exactly and line it up. But you can take your own time to do that. We're gonna jump right in. slow that down a little so we'll click on the clip come over to our read time slow 50% um, is a pretty good benchmark I know that um, I want mine around 65 and of course you can play around with this and figure out what works best for you um, one important thing that I will say though is make sure that on your read time your video quality is set to optic flow um, it makes a huge difference it um, kind of blends the frames together so on some clips it could distort it a lot and make it kind of whacked out which you might not want if it's sort of fine detail things but on kind of a large landscape like this it um, essentially instead of jumping one frame to the next it sort of blends the frames together if that makes sense um, if not doesn't matter just select optic flow it'll make it a lot more clean and polished um, as you'll see here looking a lot better one thing that's worth mentioning is um, with your shots uh, generally when you cut you don't want really any of this kind of static movement it's kind of rising slightly but then it sort of jumps in and starts moving towards the Jeep so what I like to do is kind of just cut that out so this way as soon as the clip kind of starts it's following the same camera movement and kind of pulling you in. Um, I think it looks 
better. Um, it's obviously subjective. If you want to have it um, where it starts static like that, then moves in, that's up to you. I've just personally seen it um, flows a little bit better when it's the same camera movement throughout the whole thing. Um, but beyond the point, all right, now our clip's looking pretty good. It's kind of gotten to the point where it flows good, it starts good. Um, our next thing that we can do that's pretty easy is start color grading it. So we're going to select this, come over here to our magic wand looking cool, and we'll do show color board. Um, first thing you can start to mess with, mess with is your uh, color. Now for most cinematic kind of um, videos you see, um, the highlights are usually in an orange, red, yellow kind of area. So you can play with that however much you want. Obviously too much and it just makes the film look retarded. But if you find that nice sweet spot for the highlights, say maybe right about there, and then take your shadows and you want some blue to them. Not a lot because it can go overboard pretty quickly, but just a little tad. And then from there, we can bump the saturation up. Same sort of thing. I wouldn't mess much with the mid-tone highlight shadow aspect, but more just the overall. Um, if you bump it way up, it's going to look really weird. But you can kind of go a little bit heavy on the saturation if you want. Um, it all depends on the look you want to give. So that looks pretty good. Next, we can mess with the exposure. Um, for this, I don't usually like to just do a broad one because it kind of pushes things like shadows, it might highlight where they don't need to be, but um, do it individually. Um, obviously you wanna add a little shadow, just a tad, no matter what you're really doing. And same with highlights, depending on how you want to uh, compose it, you might wanna add some to really kind of blow it out. Um, for me, we're just gonna go ahead and add a tad. Um, Mid-tones, you can kind of mess with these if you want. Um, I kind of like where they were at neutral. Um, and then from there, it looks a lot better, a lot more kind of visually interesting, if you will. Um, we'll go ahead and give that a play, see how that looks now. Looks better, um, not perfect. And obviously this is kind of a rabbit hole you can get sucked into um, messing with every sort of thing until you get it perfect um, one thing I will say though is I think I'm gonna overall maybe just darken it up a little um, so what we're gonna do is just bring the shadows down a tad highlights up a little bit for your exposure it's usually a general um, or an easy kind of guideline to follow is you kind of almost want a linear line um, from your shadows to your midtones to your highlights um, and then also the thing I'm gonna do is with my midtones I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue to those as well not a lot but a little um, from there saturation looks good exposure kind of those fine-tune adjustments um, We'll run this through, see how this looks now. So everything's looking pretty good. Obviously there's fine adjustments that I could do to make it look even better, but this is kind of just a quick run through video of some things you can do to make your footage look a little better. And then the final piece um, is to obviously get that sort of wide angle sort of uh, movie look. Um, easiest way to do that is come over to your clip, crop, and just drag them down. Um, you can pay attention to your pixels up here to see how much you actually are. Um, I think a good kind of benchmark is somewhere to the 150 to 200 range. Um, so we'll just kind of do one, let's do 180. Uh, make sure you do identical on both the top and bottom. This is where you can kind of come into some um, trouble is you want it to look as symmetric as possible.
now we can go ahead and run through it and see how that looks now. That looks pretty good um, obviously more stuff I could have done with it <clears throat> maybe polish it out a little bit more but um, I hope you guys found this video helpful maybe you learned something um, you didn't already know maybe you learned a lot you're new um, but generally some rules of thumb to go by is um, for a cinematic look is smooth slow um, and once you've gotten that down then you can um, make it kind of pop some more with the saturation, exposure, color, and mess with that sort of stuff. Um, but other than that, I um, hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what I should do next.